Hi everyone, my name is Joyce and I live in Canada. So you're welcome, just in case you're new. I live in the rural part of Canada and I try to give people tips on how they can come to Canada. I also share about my lifestyle here in Canada, in the rural part of Ontario. So welcome, in case you have not subscribed, kindly consider subscribing, consider leaving the notification bell on so that every time I do a video, uh, YouTube will get to notify you so that you don't miss out on any uh, information or any video that I, uh, I upload. So today we are going to address a question that we have uh, been asked for so many times. So people are asking me in case I don't qualify for all those other uh, pathways for coming to Canada and the only option I have is to come as a visitor. What next? What next I, after I arrive in Canada as a visitor? And today we are going to address that question uh, so that in case you find yourself in Canada, you don't get stranded in case you find yourself in Canada as a visitor, uh, you can always try this pathway. I know there are so many people who already have their work permits. Uh, sorry, they, they already have their visas for Canada. Those people who have got 10 years work, uh, 10 years uh, visas, visitor visas, and they came and they went back to their home countries. This video is for you. In case you're planning to apply to come as a tourist, to come for for in, for graduations, invitations, whatever way, whichever way you're coming to Canada as a visitor and you're in Canada, you can always use this way to you know to make your time uh, for staying in Canada longer to to extend your time. So let us look at what you can do with your visitors visa to extend it or to, uh, you know, to work in Canada as a visitor. So I know before they used to say that you have to go back to your home country and then you change it or you apply for work permit. But now because of COVID, things have changed and they have said that you can actually change that visa when you're in Canada. Okay. So, uh, and this is, uh, this is how you do it. You actually apply for a work permit. This is how you apply for a work permit as a visitor. So you need to read about COVID-19 impacts because of course there are so many changes about the process, who can apply, how to apply after you apply, and then all that. So, let us look about the process. There's a payment fee that you need to pay, which is $155 Canadian. So most foreign nationals need a work permit to work in Canada. If you're not sure, you can find out if you need a work permit. So you can just click here and find out if you need a work permit. So you need a work permit to work in Canada. Uh, in some cases, you can work without a permit. So answer this question to find out if you can work in Canada without a permit. What type of work will you do in Canada? So all the jobs are here. You, if you are an authority or a coach, aviation or accident, incident investigator, business visitor, civil aviation inspector, crew member, convention organizer, emergency service provider, exam evaluator, family member or foreign representative, a uh, foreign government officer, healthcare student, judge, ref uh, refer referee, or similar official, military personnel. Oh, I remember there's somebody who, who was asking me, who was saying he's a police officer. <laughs> so you can click here and learn more. News reporter or film and media crew. I also have somebody who is a, a film and media crew personnel. And they were asking me if, how, how they can apply. You can just come and click here. Uh, performing artists. Wow, even a performing artist. And the way there are so many. Public speaker, religious leader, short time 
short term highly skilled worker, short term researcher, student working off campus, student working on campus, my job is not on the list. So you submit all this. There are so many options. So you just submit here. Okay. So that is about the process. So who can apply? Who can apply for work permit? Eligibility requirements for all applicants. My information is always under IRCC. This is where I'm reading. I've, I got this one from, from Canada.ca. So eligibility for all the applicants, there are specific requirements you need to meet depending on where you where you are when you're applying for your work permit. It depends on whether you're in Canada already or you're outside, in, uh, you're outside Canada, okay? But regardless of where you apply for whichever work permit you apply for, you must prove to an officer that you will leave Canada when your work permit expires. You need to show that you have enough money to take care of yourself and your family during your stay in Canada and your return home. Obey the law and have no record of criminal activity we may ask you to give us police clearance certificate, okay? Not be in danger, not be a danger to Canada society, be in good health and have medical exam. Uh, not plan to work for an employer listed with the status uh, ineligible. Make sure that the employer you work for is not an employer who failed to comply with the conditions of the government. Uh, not plan to work for an employer who on regular basis offers striptease, erotic dance, uh, escort services, or erotic massages. Oh. Okay, give the officer any other document they ask to, pro to prove you can enter the country. Eligibility requirements if you apply from outside Canada. Anyone can apply before they enter Canada. However, there may be visa office requirements that you need to meet depending on whether your country or whichever country you're applying from, make sure that you follow the instructions, okay? Eligibility requirements, if you apply from inside Canada, they are all here. Eligibility, if you apply to enter Canada at a port of entry. I think we are interested in, in this one for, for outside. Okay. So there's so much here. There's so much here. You can read all this. I don't have to take you through everything. You are allowed to work in Canada without a work permit. Uh -huh. You can check. You can check all this. Okay. I think we can check that one without a work permit. Who is that? Oh, it's the same, it's the same place where we were. Some people are not required to have a work permit. I think it's among these ones that we had checked. So let us go back to our main thing. Uh, who can apply? Then how to apply? Let us click how to apply. Due to COVID-19, most applicants now need to apply online for a work permit. Answer a few questions to find out how you apply. Okay. So where are you applying from? Can we try this, guys? So where are you ap applying from? Let us try. Outside Canada, inside Canada at a port of entry. Let's apply outside Canada. At the port of entry, you can do, you can do this at the airport. You can always tell them that you want to apply for a work permit and they're going to assist you. So outside Canada, to get the forms you need, tell us how you're applying and where you're applying from. Okay. Get the application form. It's right here. So how are you applying? Online or by paper? Let's say you're applying online. We click that one. Where are you applying from? Let us click which country. Let us say Kenya. Mm, Kenya. 
And then online applications from Kenya, they say here, before you apply online, make sure that you have the instruction guide, visa office requirements for applicants in Kenya. They're right here, a scanner or a camera, a credit card, debit card to pay. And then each country is different. Create an online account. Okay, you can you can either use the, the GC or, or the, let us click, I show you. You can either you can either apply using GC key or sign in partner. Sign in partner you cannot use it when you're outside Canada because it's going to require you to use a bank. It's you partner with the bank, so avoid this one for for option two. Use the GC key. This one you can actually apply. Okay, if you don't have an account for either GC or sign in partner, you click register. Okay, so. And I saw somebody who was asking me which one to choose between GC key and sign in partner. Use the GC key partner to apply for work permit. Okay. So, so we chose Kenya. We said online, then we chose. Kenya, let us go back there. So that is it for somebody who is applying to, from Kenya. You just click this one and apply. Visa office requirement for applicants. You, just, you can apply for a work permit when you're in Kenya, when you're outside Canada, or when you're in Canada. Okay. So... Let us, okay, after you apply, what happens? Let's click here. If you are outside Canada, your fingerprints and photo biometrics, they are going to be taken. Okay. Medical exam, you go for an interview with our official in your country. We, they may ask for, for an interview. But rarely will they ask for, for an interview. Canada visas, I've not seen them asking for an interview unless they, they really want to know you more. Most of the time, they'll just do everything online. Even for the visitors, not like U.S. I know U.S., you have to book for an appointment. Canada Embassy in Kenya, you don't apply for appointment. The work permit will outline the type of work you can do, the employer you can work for, where you can work, how long you can work. If I were you and, I'm a, and I have a visitor's visa for Canada, I would wait until I'm in Canada. I would not try to apply for, for, for work permit when I'm in Kenya or when I'm outside Canada. Because you never know who is the who is the visa officer or who is who is the officer at the embassy and what feelings they have and they can always judge you. They have a right to judge you. So and if they judge you and they deny you, then it means you can also jeopardize with your uh, with your visit with your visitor's visa. So me, I, I would advise you, you you come because your visa is open. You have multiple entry. You come to Canada, and then when you're in Canada, you can now go ahead and apply for, for the work permit. And then make sure that you apply for, for, for jobs which are going to allow you to, to, to accumulate experience. Because remember, for you to get PR in Canada, there's one pathway that they say if you have Canada experience, you, you have a, a pathway to, towards PR. And there are those jobs that you can, let, let, let me show you those jobs that you can apply for when you come here as a visitor so that they lead you to PR. Yeah. Uh -huh. I know healthcare professions are there. Where had I seen that? Yeah, make sure that you look for essential occupations, healthcare occupations, healthcare profession, and essential occupations. I had seen one of them is, oh, is right here. Like now, they want twenty thousand applications for temporary workers in healthcare. You can, you can, 
when you come here as a visitor, you can you can look for a job to work in, in healthcare, like PSW, uh, like like the um, yeah the PSW is one of them, but that one you need to have a, at least a a, a program. Uh, you need to have started studied at least for six months. There is always an, an online course that you can do. You can start that online course when you're in, in your home country before you arrive here. So that by the time you come here, you just come here to do maybe your clinicals and you graduate and then you can work. The other, uh, oh, by the way, for the nurses, in case you come to Canada as a visitor and you're a nurse, you don't need to train this PSW. You just need to come and and, and, and apply for a job and give them the your, you know, your credentials for where you're coming from and they are going to give you a job. They are going to allow you to work. They don't need you to train. If you are a nurse, they don't need to, you to train to work as a PSW, personal support worker. So 30,000 applications for temporary workers in other selected essential occupations. Other selected essential occupations. I saw one of them is, is food, food production and food supply. So in case you come in here, you, you come here and find a job where you can be supplying food, that one is you're also eligible to get PR after the, after you you get the work experience. I think for one year, forty thousand applications for international students who graduated from Canadian institutions. See how many how many international students are getting PR? Forty thousand applications. This is only for twenty twenty one. Effective from May twenty twenty one. These streams, these ones. So that is why I always say it is good to study in Canada as an international student because 40,000 applications, they are likely going to give you the, the PR. So, all right, let us go back. That was just a by the way. I like giving you all these tips because I may not do a, a specific video for that. But when I mention it, you're going to remember when you when you come to applying for you whatever you want to apply for oh my goodness where where were we oh we were here okay prepare for arrival that is all that is all guys i have something i want to show you here agriculture workers agricultural workers work temporarily in canada I know so many people have been asking me about this seasonal work, seasonal agricultural workers, agricultural workers to come and pick berries. I know there are so scammers who are telling people they can give them jobs to come in and pick berries in Canada, pick fruits, uh, grapes, no uh, apples and all that. To work in Canada as, a, as an agricultural worker, you must be eligible for a work permit. It's not everybody who is eligible. Actually, it is not all the countries. I want to show you the countries which are eligible. Okay. Uh huh. Where did I see that? Participating countries. You can qualify for this program if you're a citizen of a country that takes part in the program, your government recruited you, or you are working for seasonal agricultural work program in Canada. So participating countries, I just want to show you so that you know if somebody is telling you to apply for, for seasonal agriculture program. Participating countries, one of them is uh, Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica. I have seen so many people from Jamaica on my channel. So Jama people from Jamaica, you can apply for seasonal agricultural workers. Mexico, uh, Mon uh, Montserrat, uh, St. Kitts, Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, uh, Grenadad, and Tobago. So these are the countries that the government of Canada has, has allowed or has liased with to bring their workers, to bring their citizens to come and work a seasonal agricultural workers program. So if you're in Kenya or in, I didn't see any country in Africa here. 
So if you're in any country in Africa, either East Africa or Central Africa, and people are telling you they can bring you here is to come and pick berries, I don't think it's possible because it, it, your country is not participating. You can come through other programs, but those people who are asking you for money to bring you to pick berries, seasonal, those seasonal jobs, seasonal agricultural worker program, it's not possible. It's not possible. You have to be eligible. And we have just seen there that you are, us who are coming from Africa are not eligible. Unless you're already in Canada. If you're already in Canada, that's another thing. But if you're outside Canada, it's going to be tricky. Okay. So there's always something to learn on this channel. So that's why I insist and I request that you, you subscribe. In case you have not subscribed, do it not only for yourself, but do it for somebody else. You can, you can watch a video here and you, have, you get information that you can help a nephew, you can help a niece, you can help somebody from your village. I mean, you can help, you can share it on your WhatsApp groups and then somebody finds it and they get an opportunity. And maybe if somebody, that person comes here, they are the people who are going to host maybe your kids whenever they come to Canada or even you when you come as a visitor. When you help somebody today, you don't know how they can help you tomorrow. You don't know. So always be ready to help people with sharing. Sharing information doesn't, it doesn't cost you anything. So share this information to as many people as you can and always remember to subscribe and leave the notification bell on. Thank you so, so much. Bye-bye.